So as I said, we sang a couple hymns by Charles Wesley, and we'll be singing a couple more after this first reflection. And the reason why we're doing this is that we're going to be talking a lot about the Methodist movement, as well as the Methodist minister, Hugh Beaumont. And as you may know, Hugh Beaumont uh, played Leave it to Beaver's kind and wise father, Ward. And while Beaumont became famous as an actor, uh, his original calling and most meaningful work uh, was as a Methodist minister. But interestingly, this path of being a minister but finding great success in the creative arts has some precedents. And Charles Wesley points that out. Along with his brother John and evangelist George Whitfield, Charles Wesley was the third of the founding figures, the three founding figures of the Methodist movement. He was a minister in the Anglican Church, as was his brother John, but his claim to fame was as a music composer, a hymn writer. And Charles has written some of the most famous and revered pieces of Christian music ever written. And we uh, will be singing many of them. So Hugh Beaumont being a minister but finding success in the creative art of acting has some parallel to Charles Wesley, a minister as well who found his most success in the creative art of music composition. As for Methodism, what separates it from the other earlier Protestant traditions, namely Lutheranism and Calvinism, is its belief in the capability of the human will to correctly decide uh, the way of Christ. Lutheranism said that the fall ruined, uh, ruined us so much that we are incapable of deciding the right way or the wrong way even, and that the grace of God alone can move us to salvation. Calvinism asserted this in complete terms, but also added that Christ did not die for all, but for a limited number of, of chosen people called the elect. Now, Methodism, first detailed by John Wesley, disagreed with both propositions, asserting that Christ died for all, and God, and God wanted all to know salvation through Christ's work on the cross, and furthermore, human beings created in God's image still possessed a remnant of goodness and wisdom that with the Holy Spirit's help could enable them to see the rightness in choosing the way of Christ when shown it. This applied to all, and the Methodists particularly focused on the poor and the dispossessed, believing they were often left out of the mix and forgotten and were a mission field left ignored. So part of the Methodist movement's large mission was to reach out to the poor and the dispossessed. And this more positive spin on, on things, as well as a more uh, focused uh, um, look at the poor, continued post-conversion. Wesley argued that in a true conversion, what co coincided with the sudden salvation of accepting Jesus as Savior, called justification, what co coincided with justification was the gradual cultivation of sanctification, the process of becoming holy, of becoming whole. And the focus on this process of sanctification, this method of sanctification, is the Methodist hallmark. And the Methodist Tradition gets its name from this method, this process of sanctification. So Methodism added more nuance to the Lutheran idea of sola gratia, through grace alone. And it did this by suggesting that grace gave way to works, if it was uh, truly grace at work. It also rejected uh, the strict Calvinist notion that Christ's death offered only limited atonement. 
that Christ died for only the elect. And instead they applied the idea that Christ's death offered unlimited atonement. Christ died for all human beings and all are offered this atonement. We know this as Arminianism, eh, us theologians anyway, we, which virtually all American Protestant traditions are these days. Both Universalism as well as General Baptist rejected Calvinism for Arminianism, as did the Methodists. And for Universalism, the tie to Methodism is even tighter. And the story goes, goes back to John Murray, the founder of the Universalist de denomination in America. And he was a protege of John Wesley, uh, in fact, before seeing the Universalist delight in claiming not only did Christ die for all, as Arminianism claimed, but that his death saved all, which is the Universalist mantra. So let us keep this in mind as we sing another lovely hymn by Charles Wesley, uh, titled Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. And this is probably my favorite Charles Wesley hymn, if not one of my favorite hymns altogether. So let us sing uh, hymn number 43, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. 